Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and Soap Queen TV. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode. I'm going to be showing you how to use a unique swirling tool, this hanger swirling tool. This particular product is coated, making it chemical resistant so it won't react with the lye. Yes, you absolutely can use a regular coat hanger from home as long as it's not made out of aluminum. The types of swirls that this particular product produces are really interesting and unique. To make sure that my soap doesn't get too thick while swirling, I am using this Swirl Quick Mix from Brambleberry.com. It contains a mixture of slow moving oils to ensure that I have plenty of time to work on my design. Oils like olive oil, canola, coconut oil, and palm, and vitamin E. Quick mixes are fantastic because all you need to do is heat up the oils, give it a quick shake, measure out the right amount of oils and sodium hydroxide, and you're ready to go. No measuring out multiple oils. Because I need a fair amount of time to work with this particular recipe to get the design I want, I'm using a tried and true fragrance oil from Brambleberry.com, this crisp cotton fragrance oil. It smells, well, crisp. Really, it smells very refreshing and light, and it's a real crowd pleaser. It's a nice unisex fragrance, too. If you've never made soap before, this is an advanced technique. So go ahead and stop right now and review the first four cold process episodes on Soap Queen TV. They're free, all about how to make soap and lye safety. Or you can grab a copy of my book, Pure Soap Making, which has several chapters on lye safety and the basics of how to make soap. Started, let's prep the colorants. Take one tablespoon of a lightweight oil, like sweet almond oil, and put it into four different containers. That's one tablespoon per container. Then take one teaspoon of each of your colorants and place it in those containers on top of the oil. Next, take your mini mixer, or if you don't have a mini mixer, a little mini whisk, and gently move that powder around. You don't want to turn on the mini mixer and then poof, have all that powder just go everywhere. Give each of these colorants a good blending. I like to work from lightest to darkest, so that way I don't have to rinse my mixer in between colors. If you'd like more detail on how exactly you need to mix colorants, I do have a Soap Queen TV short on this channel that you can watch on how to mix colorants. Finally, let's go ahead and prep our fragrance oil. Measure out two ounces of crisp cotton fragrance oil in a chemical resistant container. Make sure that your hanger tool is perfectly sized to fit nicely into your mold. Now I'm going to suit up for safety. So my soap making goggles on and I'm going to put my gloves on. Goggles are extremely important to ensure that no lye splashes anywhere near my eyes during the soap making process. And of course, I am soaping in an area that has no kids, no pets, and is very well ventilated. I've prepped my lye water and my quick mix oils are measured and ready to go. Both my lye water and my quick mix oils are right around 120 degrees. If you'd like, you can add sodium lactate to your lye water. The usage rate is one teaspoon of sodium lactate per pound of soap you're making. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be adding two teaspoons of sodium lactate to my lye water. This facilitates the hardening of my soap. Carefully mix the lye water into the oils by gently pouring down the shaft of your stick blender and pulsing the stick blender off and on. Make sure that you burped your stick blender. After all, you wanna make sure all of those air bubbles are to the surface and not getting whipped into your soap. Continue stick blending until you've reached just the very, very thinnest of trace. Now, split this batch into four different containers. I'm using the Brambleberry.com Easy Pour containers. To each container, add all of the dispersed colorant that you've done. So for example, all the titanium dioxide, all the yellow mica, and all the blues. Mix in the colorants completely. I'm gonna do the teensiest of stick blends here. Now add the crisp cotton fragrance oil to each container and stir in by hand. 
Notice that my last container with the ultramarine blue, I'm using my stick blender on. That's because this is my very first layer in my soap and I want it to be nice and thick. Now it's time to start pouring. Pour all of the dark blue soap into the mold and then eh, give this mold a little tap on the counter to eliminate air bubbles. Carefully pour half of the white soap, only half. I'm going to be using a spoon because I can see that this blue soap isn't quite hard enough to support this white layer. And just slow and easy does it. You don't want to get any breakthrough. Having even layers is very important for this de design technique. Now add most of the light blue onto the top of that white. Now it looks like, it, yeah, I could do a nice thin pour here because those easy pour containers make it so, well, easy to do that layer. Save a little bit of that light blue for the very end though. Now color the light blue with just a little bit more white soap. Use all the rest of that white soap. Tap the mold on the counter, jiggle it, help eliminate some air bubbles. Finally, add all the yellow soap to the top of the white. You may notice that your soap is getting a little thick. If that's the case, just give it a quick mix to get it back to loose and flowing. There we go and pour all of that yellow. Now give the mold another tap on the counter to spread that soap out and eliminate any bubbles. And now it's time to use our hanger tool. Insert it all the way down the side of the mold, a little bit on the bottom, up, but don't break through the top. Down and over and up and over, over and then up. And then finally go ahead and pull directly up all the way up the side and pull over and out. You don't want to pull the hanger towards you because if you do that, you'll splash a bunch of the soap over the top of your smooth yellow surface. Finally, remember that blue that we reserved? Just take a little bit and drizzle it down the middle. Just drizzle it down the middle. Then using a chopstick or dowel, Insert the chopstick or dowel, very small amount. We're talking like a quarter of an inch, if that. And do a little swirl design on the top. I'm not going straight back and forth. This is not quite a loop-de-loop -loop either. It's something in between just to get a nice, easy sort of S-curve look here. There we go. And then use your 99% rubbing alcohol. Spray the top of that soap to help prevent soda ash. And put the soap to bed. Put it on a heating pad to ensure gel face to get extra bright colors. I made another batch earlier so I can go ahead and show you what this looks like after it's all been cut. I'm gonna grab it now. All right, so here is that soap. It's beautiful. I love the way this looks. I'm gonna take my gloves off so I can feel a little bit better as the soap releases from the mold. So in order to release the soap from the mold, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is pull gently away at the sides and pull gently away at this side. And now I can see that my airlock has released here and then push down from the bottom and I can see my airlock releasing. It's gorgeous. I love the way this blue looks and I love how easy these silicone molds are to release soap. Wow. And there we go. The soap is fully released and it's, it's beautiful from the side. Oh, look at those layers. I can hardly wait to cut inside and see what this looks like. When you're cutting, make sure you're using a non-serrated knife so that you get a smooth, even cut. Core up, meaning make sure that you are fully prepared to make that cut and push down. And, ah. This looks so beautiful. I love how each of the hanger swirls just pulled up the colors. Gorgeous. I hope you liked learning about this technique as much as I liked making it. Until next time, happy soaping.